Hi everyone, this week on the wild side we are going to a new place called Critterville with my friend Dr. John Ramirez and we are introducing you to this. Look at that. What is it? Find out right here on this week's wild side. Welcome to this week's episode of The Wild Side, and this right here is a whip scorpion, commonly known as a vinegaroon, and they're found right here in Texas, in West Texas, in the Pecos Basin, all the way up to the Panhandle, down to Big Bend, in West Texas, in the arid environments of West Texas. Now, why are they called vinegaroons? Well, these animals can actually spray out 85% acidic acid out of their hind end, or their abdomen there. Now that has a very vinegar smell to it. That's where they get the name vinegaroon. Now these animals are an arachnid. You can see their bodies here. Uh, they don't look very spider-like, but they, they are related. They have those eight legs. In fact, those front legs right now are feelers. And then their mandibles have converted into these very large pinchers. Take a look at that. Now a vinegaroon is a very interesting little animal. You see, they're nocturnal and they're carnivorous. They're mainly eating uh, millipedes, scorpions, and other insects in their environment. But to introduce you to the vinegaroon even closer, I'm gonna invite my dear friend and a doctor on all things creepy and crawly. Let me introduce to you Dr. John Ramirez. John, what can you tell Hello us about there. this creature here? Well, frightening as it may seem, the vinegaroon, uh, one thing is for sure is they do not fly. They're very beneficial. Uh, they're non-venomous, so you don't need to worry about that. Well, now you tell me. <laughs> and the good thing is, is they are important to our environment. And again, this being a Texan, uh, they're very important for keeping other bug populations down. So if you see a vinegaroon, just let it be. Now, they do give off a warning as a skunk stands on its front paws and raises that tail. This right back here will raise up, giving you a warning. Please stay away or you will get sprayed. Really? So it goes straight up like it a goes pike straight pole? up? Right. Yeah, exactly. So uh, a lot of myth is that this is hollow. It's a tube that, but all this, everything you see here is very sensitive to their environment. But right off the base, right here is where they would spray that liquid just to get away from other predators, predators trying to eat them, or maybe someone trying to catch them. <laughs> so again, don't be alarmed. They are nocturnal. If you're ever in the West Texas area into Arizona, see one, just let it be. But the cool thing is, Clay, there was a town named at one time near the Pecos area, near Line Street, Texas, called Vinegaroon. What happened to it? Overrun with Vinegaroon? I think it was overrun with Vinegaroons. <laughs> <laughs> don't, tell, don't say that too loud. Tara Reed will make a new sci-fi movie all about it. <laughs> now, John, tell me a little bit about these they look like the modified legs, but they're they're not acting like legs. They seem like they're acting like antenna. They actually they are. So what they're doing is again they're very sensitive to their environment. Uh, you have to understand that again they are nocturnal, so they do come out to eat uh, night dwelling insects. So everything you see around the vinegar room helps them uh, to maneuver their way in the darkness and help them find prey. Now they're very sensitive. If the cricket was to run by, all these feelers back here can actually pick up the vibrations um, and then help them catch that prey. They're very quick. They are very quick. So this one seems very docile right now, but trust me, when I introduce it to its meal, which I give it crickets, uh, very fast. You wouldn't think these, these in front it would do any such harm. They don't know. They wouldn't do any harm to you, but if you're a tasty cricket. Trust me, you're, you're in being, trouble. They, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about these uh, these mandible-like pinchers. Look at those things. So those mandible-like pinchers are for grabbing prey. So they're not designed for pinching. They're not designed for use for them to pinch on, unlike a scorpion uses them to, to pinch. But they're just to hold on to their prey. Again, their defense mechanism comes from the vinegar that they spray right in this area right back here. Now, uh, conservation status, uh, what are these animals? Threatened, endangered, how's their habitat? Tell me about it. Well, the one thing is, is that West Texas is still open. So when it comes to habitat loss, there really is nil. Um, 
they do very well in, in dwellings, uh, uh, human habitats. Uh, a lot of people consider them a pest. I really don't. Um, if you go to the El Paso area, you might see some at a rest stop in the restrooms area. Um, Ooh. And again, uh, they, they are not a threatened species. Yeah, I'll stand over here. We'll let Clay get the- <laughs> no, uh, I don't want to be vinegar. <laughs> but they are important to our environment. So again, out in West Texas, say hello to one of your fellow Texans, the vinegar room. Now, before we lose Dr. John here, we're gonna be featuring some more of his species on uh, Wild Side episodes. He has an organization called Critterville. And Dr. John, tell us a little bit about Critterville and some of the conservation work you do in the area. Okay, so Critterville was started several years ago, actually to promote uh, bugs. I think a lot of people fear insects, especially cockroaches, which I adore cockroaches, but that wasn't always the case growing up, especially being young and putting on my shoe and finding out there was a cockroach <laughs> in my shoe. But the more I understood them, I wanted to spread that awareness of how important insects are. Um, so I started Critterville to introduce some of the species that I've uh, collected and been given throughout the years. So working with different organizations like Clay here, Zoo Imagination, working with other schools uh, to show the importance of why they're beneficial to our environment. Uh, many insects, flying insects, ground dwelling insects, nocturnal insects, they all play a part into our ecosystem. So that's why Critterville was created, uh, to showcase bugs like these. Though look scary, we fear them when we see them, but trust me, very docile. But again, I wouldn't go picking one up uh, when you see out. Don't do places. this. Yeah. Don't do what you see on the wild side. <laughs> yeah. uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode. It looks like our weeds are about to get waxed. Yeah, so we're going to get the grass cutting going on there. Yeah. <laughs> thank you all so much. <laughs> Click subscribe right here on YouTube and please go to Dr. John's oh, yes. Critterville <laughs> Facebook page. Give him a like and we can learn more about these amazing creatures. As always, stay wild conservation rules, and we'll see you next week when we highlight yet another one of your favorite species. Although for most of you, this might not have been one of your favorite species. All right, but you now you know all about the vinegaroon, the whip scorpion. We'll see you next week. Bye everybody. <laughs>